Hello, do you know the two most important words? What do you think they are? Well, when these two words are frequently expressed, they have the power to cheer spirits, strengthen friendships, and lift your life to a higher path. What do you think the words are? The words are, thank you. That's right. A sincere yet simple expression of gratitude. Hi, my name's Karen. I'm the host of Thriving Talk, and welcome to my virtue series. My goal here with the series is to discuss various virtuous attributes that can help us become strong so we can thrive spiritually, physically, and mentally. Today, we are talking about gratitude and this how this attribute really does touch all three areas, mental, spiritual, physical. So let's start with the question, what is gratitude? If you know what gratitude is, what, it, what you think gratitude is, what gratitude means to you, let me know in the comments. And if you are watching live or in the replay, let me know where you're watching from. That would be great. Okay, so gratitude is a state of appreciation. Um, it is an act of thanksgiving, which causes us to be humble. Now, if you've been following my series so far, you'll know that last week we talked about humility. So if you want to learn a little bit more about humility, feel free to check out that episode. Um, so because we recognize an act of kindness, service, or caring from someone else, which lifts us, lifts us and strengthens us. So in contrast, what is ingratitude? And do we have ingratitude? <laughs> Maybe we see ingratitude in others. Ingratitude is the attitude of being unaware or not recognizing when someone has assisted us or helped us. Or even worse, when we know we have been helped and have not given thanks privately or publicly. Which behavior do you tend to follow? Gratitude or ingratitude? Let me know in the comments. All right, and you know what? Sometimes some of these virtues that we are going over, um, sometimes we are weak in them. We're probably all weak to a point in these. So if this is an area where it might not be your strong, your strength, that's okay, we can work on it. Okay, so maybe you feel like you don't have a lot to be grateful for especially in the midst of struggles, hardships, when things aren't going your way. Sometimes it feels like just everything is falling apart and we don't feel very grateful. Um, but let's talk about why we should be grateful anyways, even if we feel like we don't have a lot to be grateful for. No matter our circumstances, you might have a, a beautiful house, you might be living on the streets, you might have a big family, or you might be lonely and have nobody. Um, you might have a lot of money or nothing. But no matter your circumstances, there's always something, probably several things to be grateful for. So um, it all kind of helps, and gratitude, like it helps us put everything in perspective in our lives because there's always something to be grateful for. So let me know some of the, of the things you are grateful for. Feel free to put them in the comments there. And it might inspire other people and help them realize some of their own blessings. So it might be health. 
that you're grateful for. It might be a loving relationship. It might be friends. It might be knowledge of a God. It might be having a roof over your head or food on your table. So let me know. What are some of the things you're grateful for? When we focus on the good, we become happier. And we develop a deeper relationship with God from realizing and acknowledging that He has blessed us. All right, so I wanted to share a quote. I'm just going to bring it up here. So this is by Dieter F. Uchtdorf. He said, those who set aside the bottle of bitterness and lift instead the goblet of gratitude can find a purifying drink of healing, peace, and understanding. What do you think about that? When we express feelings of gratitude, we experience cleansing or healing. So let's talk for a minute about how gratitude can physically affect our minds and help us to be happier and ease people out of depression. Um, from the Indiana University, conducted by Joshua Brown and Joel Wong, where they actually analyze the effect um, of gratitude on the brain, as well as behaviors of those who struggle with mental health. So the way that gratitude affects people who are mentally well might be different, or at least not as noticeable as how it affects people with mental health issues. So this study used people who were struggling with mental health and um, their research proves that gratitude actually helps. So here are four insights of the psychological benefits that they discovered with their research. Gratitude unsha unshackles us from the toxic emotions. So if you are spending more time thinking about positive things, then you're spending less time focusing on the negative. So they kind of said it's not necessarily that you're thinking about something positive. It's that you're replacing the negative with positive. You're getting rid of that negative. Having that negativity is toxic. So if you can get that out completely, then that's what we need. And the way to get that out is to replace it with positive things. Gratitude helps mentally, even if not shared with the giver. So what they did in this study is they asked people to write, write what they're grateful for down on paper. And even if they didn't physically give that paper to the person who did something nice for them that they're grateful for, it significantly um, helped and affected their brain for the good. So gratitude benefits take time. So they said they don't see the results on the brain immediately. It might take a few weeks, three to four weeks type thing. But this is interesting. Gratitude has lasting effects on the brain. So even though it might take a few weeks before it's noticeable in the brain, it can be long lasting. So they concluded by saying gratitude reverses our priorities to help us appreciate the people and the things we do. So now that you know what gratitude is and the physical and mental benefits of it, let's talk a little bit about the spiritual benefits.
So there's a hymn that comes to mind. I'm not going to sing it for you. <laughs> I could, but uh, I'll just tell you the lyrics. It's called Count Your Blessings. So if you aren't familiar with this hymn, maybe look it up. Or if you ask, I might be able to post a link to it. But I encourage you all to look it up and read the lyrics. I'm only going to read one verse. But this is what it says. When upon life's billows you are tempest tossed. When you are discouraged, thinking all is lost. Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. There is power in gratitude, power in acknowledging what God has done for you. Have you noticed the power of gratitude in your life? Let me know in the comments. Gratitude is a divine principle that is taught throughout scripture. In the verse in the book of Doctrine and Covenants, uh, section 59, verse 7, it, it says, well, let me see, did I have a, no, I didn't. Okay, so thou shalt thank the Lord in all things. So we're asked to be thankful. And we're asked to thank him for all the blessings that come to us. Did you ever think that when someone does something nice for you, perhaps they were inspired, divinely inspired to do something nice for you? So we can say thank you to that person who did something nice. And we can say thank you to God for inspiring them to do something nice. Okay, so this scripture means that we should express thankfulness for what happens. Not only for the good things, but also for the opposition and challenges in our lives. And that, and um, these challenges that add to our experiences and our faith. We put our lives in his hands, realizing that all that transpires is for our experience and benefit. Don't you think it's much easier to have gratitude for the good things in our lives than it is to have gratitude for the challenges that we experience? Time for some personal reflection here. How are we doing with this? <sighs> well, in the heat of trials, are we able to take a step back and realize that this is for our own good? to strengthen us. I can do this sometimes. I'd like to think that I do it pretty well, but I know I can do better and that I can do it more regularly. Maybe it's not until after the trial that we see the lesson. How are you doing with this? So how do we express gratitude? There are the two important words. Thank you, of course. But here are some suggestions. If you have others, feel free to share them in the comments. So we can express gratitude in person by talking to them and telling them how grateful we are. In writing, so write a letter or send an email or send a message through service. So maybe someone made you a meal. Well, maybe in return, you'll make them a meal or you're, you will um, rake their leaves or, or do something that you can see that they need. Um, so you can do physical things like that. And also you can express gratitude through prayer. So of course, we would thank our Father in Heaven for, for all of our blessings. You can also pray for people. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> okay, so for personal growth and development, consider these. Make a list. So this is what um, in the study they encouraged people to do make a collage or a board and you can pin 
all the things that you're grateful for up on this or the words of the things that you're grateful for up on this board. Start a gratitude journal. So this is really popular and it's a really, really good idea because it's something you can pass on to your posterity. And also personal development, expressing gratitude through prayer. So as you build your relationship with God by expressing gratitude, you become stronger. And your path becomes more clear and you benefit for sure. Okay, so can you think of other ways to express gratitude? Maybe write a song or write a poem. Scripture does say a song of the heart is a prayer unto God. So gratitude may be increased by constantly reflecting on our blessings and giving thanks for them in our daily prayers. So creating a habit of expressing gratitude can be very beneficial. So I just wanted to share a scripture. Uh, this is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So actually, I have another, another quote that I want to share with you. Okay, so this is from Joseph F. Smith. He said, the spirit of gratitude is always pleasant and satisfying because it carries with it a sense of helpfulness to others. It begets love and friendship and engenders divine influence. Gratitude is said to be, this is nice. The memory of the heart. What do you think about that? Do you think that gratitude can be the memory of the heart? Especially knowing that with that research, that gratitude does affect the mind and that it is long lasting. So perhaps there is something with memory and uh, emotion pretty interesting, I thought. Okay, so I just wanted to finish up by referencing another hymn. This hymn um, is copyrighted, so I'm not going to share it in detail. It is a beautiful hymn. Now, hymns are a great resource. If you're looking for inspiration, you're looking for a pick-me-up, for some extra joy in your life, read or listen to hymns. They're really wonderful with inspiring messages. This particular hymn is beca called Because I Have Been Given Much. The lyrics express how when our hearts are full of gratitude to the Lord for the many blessings he pours out upon us, we can't help but to share what we have to give to others as well. It is the most beautiful hymn. You will need a tissue. You will cry. Believe me. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. I encourage you to check out that hymn. But isn't that true? When we acknowledge how much God has blessed us, and that acknowledgement is gratitude, one of the best ways to say thank you to God is by returning, paying it forward, sharing with others, serving others. He gives us so much. How can we not give to others? So gratitude truly has power to keep on giving. In some quiet way, the expression of and feeling of gratitude have a wonderful cleansing and healing nature and brings warmth to the giver and the receiver. You might not be a religious person, but to me, there is a creator who loves us very deeply. 
the power of this attribute, gratitude, indeed is divine. At least it feels that way to me. So I encourage you to remember in our efforts to express gratitude for the things in our lives that we also remember to express gratitude to Jesus Christ and our Father in Heaven for all the little things as well as the big things, for their love, for the gift of the atonement where we're able to repent of our sins and be made whole and clean again and for the gift of the resurrection so that we can have eternal life. Sometimes we're so busy with life that we forget that these are magnificent gifts that have been given to us. We get caught up in the little things that are pulling us down and we need to realize we are loved, we are worth it, God loves us, and he has given us blessings and he wants to give us even more. You can ask in prayer for more blessings. And then when we get them, express gratitude and thanks for those blessings. So it's so important that we always try to progress personally and to share what we know with others so that we can all thrive. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're watching in the replay, just type in hashtag replay in the comments. And uh, if you've enjoyed this time with me, fantastic. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video so that others can enjoy the benefits of it as well. So next time in my virtue series, we will be discussing empathy and why it's an attribute worth developing. I hope to see you there Sunday afternoons on Thriving Talk. Keep thriving and until next time. Bye.